I'll be testing a set of Dr. Page Martin's Technical Inks. I want to see how suitable they are for line and wash sketching and is there any advantage of using these inks over watercolor. I'm going to start with my favorite way to create line and wash paintings by creating a very free flowing wash first and then kind of finding my subject in that wash. I dropped a little bit of yellow ink and I'm going to add a little more water to it to make it float easier and I'm also going to help it with a brush and kind of distribute it on paper just to connect all the sides of my paper. I see a lot of warm yellow in the reference photo so that's what I'm going to try and recreate on my painting as well. Let's try some orange. I was a little hesitant to use my brush at first because the description for this ink says that they are what Waterproof, which means once you put them down and they dry, you can't re-wet them with water, you can't move them or lift them. But I have some water on the side here, I'm going to rinse my brush right away and I'm not going to let that ink dry on the brush because that would ruin it. Actually that first yellow color that I applied is not called yellow, it's called daffodil. The colors have interesting names. The orange is orange, then there is scarlet, there is rose, there is rhodamine, there's turquoise, indigo, april green, whatever that's supposed to mean, spruce green, olive green, which is clearer, gold ochre, and there is also color antelope, which I think I will be using later. That's probably the darkest color along with indigo in the set. I tested it a little bit before it's kind of light brown so I might have to modify it a little bit to make it work for my drawing. So I'm just having fun throwing all kinds of colors on paper in kind of a faintly v-shaped pattern because I think that's what the cat roughly looks like with his uh, big bushy tail up in the air. I need to lift the ink here on his face even though it's waterproof and permanent while it's wet we can still lift it and make corrections. And I think I'm going to also use salt to give those inks a little bit of texture. I think that could look really interesting. I let that first lay dry. It took quite a while because I used quite a bit of water and quite a bit of inks. And here is that ink that's called antelope. It's basically sepia color, a little bit lighter than sepia maybe. So now I am going to draw the detail on my cat. I'm using a traditional steel nib pen and I'm just going to draw the cat on top of the wash. When creating line work, I mentioned it in other videos about line and wash style of sketching, I think it's very important not to have a heavy continuous line. The line needs to have variation in thickness and also there need to be some breaks in the contours, in the details. That keeps the focal point of the painting connected to the sides. That kind of lets that wash flow through the focal point, through the subject of the sketch and it doesn't feel quite so isolated and kind of rigid. So that's what I'm doing. I'm sketching the cat with light varied marks and while that ink is still wet we can soften it with a brush with just clean water. Once it's dry it doesn't move so you see my underwash stays in place unlike watercolor that can lift or get mixed in if you go a little too heavy-handed. So that helps me to create more varied tone in the painting or in the sketch I should say. So I just wanted to point out the difference that ink makes as compared to watercolor. When we do the wash with watercolor and we draw with inks on top of it, it's a very popular and very, very versatile technique used in a lot of genre, in urban sketching, in portraiture, in still lives, floral paintings. But I was curious about using color inks instead of watercolor and I can already feel that that might be my preferred method to do this. Those inks might not be as easy to transport on location as watercolor. I'm a little scared to knock them over and have them all over my desk, but I think for studio work they really might be the thing to do instead of using watercolor. You see I switched the brush. I want to unify the, those marks, those uh, pen marks that I applied and give my cat a little more substance, a little more visual interest.
and if I did a little too much, I can go back in with white ink. This is also Dr. Paige Martin's pen white ink and um, bring back a few white areas. This pen white ink has really good coverage, so just a few brush marks are enough. And of course I can add some darker marks with still new pen or go back to color inks with the brush, just trying to give the cat a little more substance and define the form a little bit better. We'll come back to the cat at the end of the video, but now I wanted to show you a different technique that I tested as well with these technical inks. I'm going to sketch a dog. This is Mexican hairless dog, also known as Sholo, and I'm going to sketch him a little bit differently. I'm going to start with line work and then apply a wash of different color inks. The set of inks doesn't have black or any really dark colors, so to get kind of neutral brown, I mixed antelope, which is light brown, with indigo, and I really like this color. So I'm going to do the line work first. I have the dog sketched out on my Bristol paper. The cat was painted on Bristol as well. It's nice thick paper, but it's smooth, so it's really easy to work with inks on it, much better than trying to use still new pen on watercolor paper or even on thin sketch paper. It will be hard. You can easily rip it if your sketch paper is not thick enough, but Bristol is ideal surface for inks. I think that's what it was actually designed for, for illustrators. And I'm going to do the line work first and let it dry. <laughs> Once the line work is dry, I can start applying inks. This is again that antelope color. Let's give the dog a little bit of warmth. As you see, because my line work is dry, it's now permanent, so I can paint on top of it without disturbing the underlying layer. Of course, I didn't have to use these inks. I could have used watercolor, but we're testing inks, so here we go. And maybe another warm color. I have this rose here. Let's try that. And I think this is another advantage of these inks over watercolor for washes is that they preserve their transparency even in multiple layers. If you paint with watercolors, you know that sometimes if you do a little too much, you apply too much pigment or if you just one layer too many, you can lose transparency, there can be mud. But with these inks, I was working with very saturated color and they never lost their transparency and they mixed together those layers when they overlap they're still nice and transparent so i started with the warm on the painting with yellows and pinks and now i'm applying a mixture of indigo with rose color to paint those kind of blue purple shadows and of course i don't want the dog to be isolated on the page so i am connecting him to the sides of my page with some brush strokes also with some splattering i want this to be kind of finished composition instead of just a you know random sketch these inks are highly pigmented i would imagine they would last a while because it really doesn't take much to create saturated color i'm even lifting color with water in some places because it's just so bright and so saturated and while we're talking about the difference between these inks and watercolor, the texture when the inks are dry is of course different from watercolor. They stay on the surface of the paper and you see a little bit of a sheen if you look at the painting after it's dry. Overall, after this quick couple experiments, I would say that these technical inks are definitely a material for someone who loves line and wash sketching. And a lot of beautiful artwork can be done with this versatile material. finishing touches that I applied on the dog were with that mixture of antelope and indigo colors, but I did it with a brush just to add darkest darks. Everything was a little bit too delicate and the line work looked too fine. It did have a lot of contrast and I like a lot of contrast. I like bright colors and I like wide tonal range. 
So I added darkest darks and a few more details with that neutral tone that I created and the sketch was done as well. Here are the two finished pieces side by side. Let me know in comments what you think about this technique and if you tried this colorful inks. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one here on Tamarab Studios channel. Help other artists to see this video by liking or sharing it. To see future videos, subscribe and click the bell button to be notified when they're published. Thanks again and stay creative!